Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore. This is Faith School. Anybody remember what happens in Faith School? <laughs> it's the place where my spirit is fed. My faith grows stronger, and I learn how to be an overcomer. When you're born again, you're born a spiritual baby. You don't know everything automatically, and you haven't developed completely in everything. Ephesians talks about uh, speaking the truth in love, growing up in Him, in all things, to the full measure of the stature of Christ. What do you look like when you're a fully developed Christian? Like Jesus. Hallelujah. He is the, the mark of perfection that we're after. And if you've made a lot of mistakes, which all of us have, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth toward those things that are before, for that, that high mark and prize, that high calling, being like the master. So uh, that's what we learn in faith school. Faith pleases God. Jesus completely pleased the Father every day of his life. And that's what we aspire to. Get your Bible, get something to make a note with, come on into the classroom, and let's open up our spirits and receive more of this today. Father, in Jesus' name, all of us delight in you. We hold it the highest privilege and honor to know you and to be chosen by you, to be your children and your people. Thank you so much for loving us, choosing us, saving us. We ask you for the anointing that teaches, uh, eyes and ears that hear, a heart that can distinguish and discern and understand, asking for answers. Uh, show us things we haven't seen. Remind us of things you've shown us and how they fit and how they apply. And we purpose not to be hearers only, but to be doers, those who apply and practice your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you'd look, please, in our textbook again in John, the fourth chapter, continuing our study that we're calling Faith for Healing, going through our individual accounts of healing that are recorded in the ministry of Jesus. We looked at the healing of the leper. We looked at the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. We looked at the healing of the paralyzed man. And now we're down to number four in John 4 the healing of the nobleman's son. And I'm going to read this out of the Amplified, verse 43. It says, But after these two days, Jesus went on from there into Galilee, although he himself declared that a prophet has no honor in his own country. However, when he came into Galilee, the Galileans also welcomed him and took him to their hearts eagerly, for they had seen everything that he did in Jerusalem during the feast. For they too had attended the feast. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son was lying ill at Capernaum. Having heard that Jesus had come back from Judea into Galilee, he went away to meet him and began to beg him to come down and cure his son, for he was lying at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and miracles happen, you never will believe at all. The king's officer pleaded with him, Sir, do come down at once before my little child is dead. Jesus answered him, Go in peace. Your son will live. And the man put his trust in what Jesus said and started home. And that's why the story's in the book, <laughs> right there. <laughs> but even as he was on the road going down, his servants met him and reported saying, your son lives. Now you'll notice, you'll, you'll 
Here, you'll see this phrase repeated like three times. Your son lives. And that was the word that came from the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, your son lives. Is that not the answer to the whole situation? Huh? How many words? (laughs) Your son lives. But three anointed words from heaven. Oh, come on. Can you see that? Why, Why am I talking about that? Tell me how faith comes. How do you get faith? How do you get faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's Romans 10, 17. But if you look up the words there in in verse 17, it, it actually is the word of Christ. Faith comes by hearing the word of Christ. Well, Christ means anointed, the anointed one and his anointing. And, and word is the word for, um, excuse me, it comes from the word rhema. And so you could say it like this, faith comes by hearing the rhema Christos, Amen. the anointed spoken word. Can you see that? Yes. Not just by necessarily reading a random passage in the Bible. Now God does speak to you. Through the written word. No question about that. But sometimes people have said, well, I got a real situation in my life. What do I do? Folks say, well, stand on the word. That's a good general encouragement, but it's a big book, right? It's a big, what do you mean? Which one? Where? There must be a spirit quickened word to your spirit that allows faith to rise Come on, can you see that? Amen. And come up in you. And, and you say it like this. You've heard from him Amen. about this situation. You see, the, uh, the nobleman, as we're going to see further, uh, his, his faith is not there when he first arrives. His faith is imperfect. What got his faith the rest of the way? <laughs> this word. That the Lord spoke to him. Right? He looked at him and he said, your son lives. Now go your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so at that point, he's got a decision to make. Doesn't he? Is this it? Is this the answer? Do we keep looking for something else? Can you see why this is in the Bible for us to look at and study? Because we deal with this every day, don't we? I mean, every day you come across situations that are challenging, where there's needs, where there's issues, where there's attacks. And what is the victory that overcomes the whole world? It's, It's our faith. But in every situation... Where does my faith come from? It's not just something I just fabricate myself. Where does it come from? We're not just talking about faith in a generalized sense. We're talking about faith in God. Faith in God. Well, the only way I get faith in God is when I hear God tell me something that he said he has done for me or he's going to do for me then I can believe that, right? I, 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 it's still my choice, but I, I have to, I must hear from him. Then I can stand. I'm not just grabbing something out of the air. He's, I'm going to believe for this. I'm going to believe for that. I'm going to stand that this happens. And uh, The more I've learned about faith and, and from even making some mistakes myself, um, when I hear people say, well, I'm, I'm believing that this is going to happen. My first thought is based on what? I don't always tell people that. I don't always interrupt them. But if somebody says, I'm just believing that this is going to happen. Based on what? See, faith has a foundation. And that f- f- faith in God is based on the foundation of hearing from him. Have you heard from him in this situation? Now, he he speaks to you through his word. He speaks to you by his spirit. 
He'll speak to you by his spirit through other people, through your elders, your ministers and different ones. But it's all the same source. It's that same voice. How many understand it's the same voice speaking in Genesis is speaking in Revelation. It's through different human uh, vessels, but it's the same source. It's the same voice. Same spirit who lives in you 24-7. But you cannot have faith. That, that's why people have had what they call faith failures. They, they prayed something and it didn't happen. They said, I'm going to stand and believe that this happened. They made confessions and it didn't happen. Because they hadn't heard from him. They, they, they learned some faith principles, but they separated it from hearing from him on a daily basis. Uh, every day is a new day, Amen. right? Yes. Every situation is a different situation. And there is no substitute for hearing from him. You say, well, I, I hadn't heard from him. Well, quit talking to me. And, and put your nose in the Bible. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> and seek him Amen. about this. If you need to miss a, a, a meal or two, whatever you need to do, seek him until you get it. Yes. Until you hear from him. What, like that word that man heard. Your son lives. Amen. Hallelujah. When you got the word, you got it. Yes. I mean, everything else will just have to get out of the way and line up because this is thus saith the Lord. This, this is unfailing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you've got to have that word for whatever it is you're believing for. You've got to have that. You'll find it in the written word again and again. You'll find it when the Spirit of God speaks to you. And, I, and, you, and you could get it in a class like this. God could speak through us something. But you would know that's not Brother Keith. That's the Lord talking to me. Yes. You've got to have that. And when you got that and you're willing to act on it, what happened with him? Miracles. Miracles happened. Amen. Verse 48, Jesus said, unless you see signs and miracles happen, you never will believe at all. The king's officer pleaded with him, Sir, do come down at once before my little child is dead. Jesus answered him, Go in peace. Your son will live. Or your son lives. And the man put his trust in what Jesus said and started home. He put his trust in what Jesus said. <laughs> How do we know he did? Turned around and started home. <laughs> is that right? Oh, boy. One thing I like about this, uh, this healing, I like all of them, but this is faith only. No helps from anything else. Jesus didn't pray over the boy. He didn't go to the house and lay hands on him. There was nothing else except faith in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Do we have that today? Yes. Huh? We have that today. The same thing. And it is the highest level of receiving. And it, it, there's a great liberty that comes with it because you're not dependent on finding somebody that can pray the prayer for you. You're not, we, we thank God for that. That's, yeah, it's right to pray for people. You're not dependent on finding somebody that's got the special anointing to, to lay hands on you. That's right too. But none of that was involved in this. It was just faith in the Word of God. Amen. He hadn't seen anything. He didn't feel anything. There were no other aids or helps. Faith only. In the Word of God only. But did he get the miracle? Did he? Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the great thing about that, when you learn how to just step out in faith on the Word of God only. You know how you got it. And so you can keep it. And so when something else comes up, you can get that answer again too. And you're not always looking for some man or woman or group to help you. Or you're not always looking for some aid because you've learned how to go straight to the source. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And hear from Him for yourself. Actually, earlier in this passage, 
uh, is where that phrase came from. You know, the, the woman at the well of Samaria, Jesus had just talked to her and ministered to her and she got all excited and, and ran back to her home uh, village and town and told them about Jesus. And, and so they were all excited and he came and ministered to them and preached to them. And when they got through hearing him, they said, now we believe, not because of what you said, we have heard him for ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, thank God for hearing him for yourself. Amen. Then you're not dependent on anybody else's interpretation or their filter that they see things through. Said out loud, I can hear him for myself. I can hear him for myself. In fact, he expects you to come straight to him. He said, uh, uh, the man put his trust in what Jesus said, verse 50, and he started home. But even as he was on the road going down, his servants met him and reported saying, your son lives. <laughs> See, why does that phrase keep coming up? Because that's what changed everything. And it changed it before anybody saw it, before anybody knew it, you know, on, on this side of the equation. It, it, that word changed it. Your son lives. So he asked him, uh, what time did he begin to get better? Why do you ask that? Huh? Why do you ask that? Because he's thinking, that's exactly what Jesus said. <laughs> right? They met him and they, and, and of course he wants to hear what they're going to say. You know what they're going to say? They meet him, they open their mouth and go, your son lives. He's like, what? What? That's exactly what he said. Hours ago, he said, okay, now when? Tell me when he started getting better. And they said, um, yesterday, during the seventh hour, about one o'clock in the afternoon, the fever left him. Well, we've heard about that before, every fever is leaving. Yeah. Uh, then the father knew that it was the very hour when Jesus had said to him, your son lives. And he and his entire household believed. Now, why, why would they say that? They all believed. Well, they didn't attribute it to chance. Well, he happened to start getting better. What a coincidence. No, it ain't a coincidence. Something caused it to change. It was the power of God that re was released when somebody acted on the Word of God. Amen. Oh, come on, can you see that? The power of God manifested Miles away in another town, the moment somebody acted in faith on a revealed Word of God about that situation. Can that still happen today? Yes. It is happening today. It's happening in many places across the planet today. Though some still scoff and mock at it, all they're doing is missing their own miracles, missing their own deliverances and healings. No, they, the entire household believed. They said, that's, that's a miracle. This is the second sign that Jesus performed after he came out of Judea into Galilee. That's the, uh, the Amplified. So back up to verse uh, 43. And uh, let's begin looking at other, we've already been looking at components of it. But uh, we noticed on yesterday that when it said uh, Jesus himself had said a prophet has no honor in his own country, and that he left uh, the area where people didn't respect him, and he came into this area, into Galilee, and this is an area around the, the lake of Galilee. It's called a Sea of Galilee, but it's, it's a, a lake, and uh, several towns around that lake. And when he got down to that area, the Galileans received him. They did what? They received him. Now, uh, we, we'll see other things happen, but before they saw miracles and signs and wonders in, amongst themselves, they received him before they uh, received them, <laughs> them healings. <laughs> you know what I mean by that? Uh, it is God's will that we be healed. But healing has to do with the temporal and the temporary. This whole life down here, this physical, material, human body, uh, this condition is very temporary, we're told. 
and there is an eternity beyond this physical life. And what God is more concerned about than anything, and we should be too, is our relationship with Him. Hmm? Our relationship with Him, because that lasts forever, and that is the solution to all the issues. Um, like I mentioned on yesterday, I had the privilege of working in Brother Kenneth Hagin's healing school for a number of years, and we'd have people travel from all over the country and other countries to come there and be ministered to. And, and um, I had a, um, a couple there that were seeking a healing for one of their children, and they had been there for a few weeks, and I just I couldn't sense in my spirit that they were making good progress. And um, so I'm, I'm praying one afternoon about it, and uh, as I'm praying, I saw something in my spirit. Now, I, I didn't get, you know, I didn't fall into a trance or have an open vision, but I saw it inside myself. And this is what I saw. It's like they uh, didn't want to get any closer to God than they needed to, to get their healing and then go back to their life. This was just a very inconvenient disruption to their life. And they didn't really want God. They just wanted a healing. Well, that's a problem. Can you see that? Uh, and, and that's not just my, my faith. You, you know, this was the, the thing with his own hometown. They didn't want him. They didn't respect him. They, they thought he was, you know, talking too big. Who is he? Saying he's anointed. And so... Um, the scripture said he could there do no mighty works. So did they get to see all the miracles and the healings? They didn't get them because they didn't want him. Amen. Come on, can you see that class? You, you can't separate them, healings, from him. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, right? You, you, can't, you can't separate those two. And so many times when people have problems in their life, whether it's physical or emotional or financial or marital or whatever relationship, there's more to it than what you see on the surface. And there are other things that need to be changed and fixed spiritually or elsewise. Even if this current situation is fixed, you're going to have another one similar to it right away because the cause wasn't fixed. And so when you come to God to get help, the Bible said we can come boldly right to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to get help in the time of need. But if you come and say, God, you know, we live in an a, a email, text, microwave, drive-through world, right? I mean, every, everybody wants everything when, right? right now, right now. And we don't want to wait, you know, on anything. That's the nature of the flesh. The flesh is impatient. But um, the Lord said, be still. Know that I am God. And if you come to him and say, God, God, I'm in a hurry. I got four more things I got to do this afternoon. If you could just zap me and heal me, I got to go. Would you? <laughs> again and again, if you'll get quiet and listen, he'll say, come on a little closer. Come here. Come here, sit down. Come here, sit down right here. Let me talk to you. you. You think I need a healing, but really there's more to it. Hmm? Uh, or maybe you're in a mess with your finances or in a mess with your relationship. How'd you get in this mess? Uh, a lot of times people don't want to talk about that. <laughs> How'd we get here? But if you listen to him, you'll draw near to him. He'll draw near to you. And if you'll get still and quiet... And be open and willing, not just to get the answer you want, but to hear what he wants to say to you. See, so many times people try to make prayer a uh, one-sided deal. You know, uh, you, you talk, 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 and all he's supposed to say is, yes, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> prayer is supposed to be a dialogue. And really, the person who knows the most should do the most talking. <laughs> And the person who knows less should do the more listening. Yes. Right. Now, that's not usually what you have. But um, you draw near and say, Father, you know, uh, first of all, you need to know he already knows. 
what you need. He already knows what's going on. He knows way more about it than you do. So come and ask a question. Father, what do I need to look at here? What would you say to me? And try to uh, be, don't try to be, be as open as you know how to be. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to hear anything about any area. And if your heart truly is willing, you'll hear from him. Yes. I'm telling you, you don't have to beg him. He wants to talk to you. He wants to, uh, the biggest problem is most people just never stop long enough and get quiet and want to hear from him. But the moment you do, you'll hear from him. Now, it may not be something your flesh wants to hear, <laughs> but it'll be the answer and it'll be right. And if you'll receive it and do it, it'll fix things. It will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we see in this situation of the healing of the nobleman's son, uh, as we'll, we'll study more about this as we go, but this man had an idea of how this healing was going to happen. He's going to ask Jesus to come, and Jesus is going to come down to the house and maybe lay hands on him or whatever, and it didn't go that way. And when it didn't go that way, he was shocked and troubled and just kept pleading with him, no, come. But we need to remember, we're not Lord. He's Lord. Yeah. We, we can know it's his will for us to be saved, forgiven, healed, delivered, but you can't tell him how to do it. You need to ask him, how do we do this? And it won't be the same every time. So we, we, we've seen, and we'll see as we go, uh, more than once, people said, Lord, would, would you come? And, and he went, right? But there's other times he wouldn't go. But it doesn't mean he didn't want them healed. They still wound up healed, right? But there was a different way. We, got, we, we must be open and believing. He knows best. He knows the right way. And we've got to be willing to, to set aside our little idea about how this was supposed to work mm -hmm. and just ask him, Lord, what, what do you say? Why don't you say that right now? Father, Father I, set aside I set aside my ideas. My ideas. I, ask you, I ask you, not my will, not my, will, not my, will, not my, way, my way, your will, your, will, your, way, your way, I ask for it, ask reveal it to me. It to me. I'm, willing, I'm willing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father really does know best. Amen. Doesn't he? Yes. <laughs> and then we're out of time again today. We'll see you next time right here in Faith School. I've got the victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.